Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here, and I'm back again with Chris from North American Rescue. And uh, as promised, we're here to do some more videos. Uh, actually, this time on some first aid kits and kind of what you can expect to find or items you should really be aware of in your first aid kit. So, Chris, take us through it. So, this one here is our mini first aid kit. Um, and what you can uh, find in here is you're going to find... Uh, the, the tourniquet on the outside. On the inside, you're going to find a pair of gloves, chest seal. Um, you're going to have some quick clot, uh, and then you're going to have the, a pressure dressing. So, and I should definitely mention that uh, the kits we're actually showing you right now. Um, obviously, you would want to expect to find these things in any kit, but these are the North American Rescue specific kits that we do sell, and um, there's a reason we sell these. And uh, yeah, so this is this is what you can expect to find, especially in that basic kit. And then we also have some other kits as well. Like uh, this one here looks different, but so the only two, the only difference between these two kits are going to be they're going to have the same exact items, but on the inside uh, you're going to have the tourniquet on the inside instead of uh, on the outside in the pouch. So you know if you do a lot of shooting by yourself uh, and you have this on you, it might be it's going to be easier to um, get into your kit. Um, so if you had an accidental discharge or something, it's going to be easier to get into your kit by just uh, pulling the flap up and getting into your tourniquet than it would be maybe to unzip. So the only thing is we have, if you're using this, probably want to take it, um, have this out of the package and right. ready to go. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was going to mention that. I was going to mention that we're going to get to that in uh, future videos that you'll definitely want to stay tuned for uh, because that's definitely some good information to have. And yeah, so it's, it's all situational dependent, which kit to get. Um, yeah, we have, a, there's some little bigger kits with uh, a little more items, but I mean, I think this is a good, a good kit uh, for what you're going to need out there. Um, it, people always ask, will this treat, um, is, is this kit good for one person? It really depends what the situation is. Right. You know, depends on the injuries that occurred. You know, if you have a isolated uh, accidental discharge while you're reholstering your weapon and you have, you know, bleeding from the, uh, from the thigh, um, you might need two tourniquets in that case if you have a, a large thigh, um, but or you might need just the pressure dressing depending. Maybe it didn't hit anything at all um, important, uh, and you just need the pressure dressing on there. So it really just depends on the injury. Yeah. You okay. Know? Excellent. Good piece of information there. And uh, especially since you know, depending on when you're watching this video, uh, if you're watching it when it came out, because you you're subscribed to Brownells, which is great, um, then you saw it immediately. So. As you or may or may not be aware, it is now Stop the Bleed Month. Uh, so, Chris, just kind of give us a brief of you know what exactly Stop the Bleed Month is for those who aren't familiar with it. So there's a program uh, called Stop the Bleed. It came out after the uh, after the Newtown shooting in Connecticut. Uh, a bunch of people got together, uh, called the Hartford Consensus, um, and came up with a program to teach everybody how to stop the bleeding. Uh, even though it came out of the active shooter situation, um, bleeding to death can happen anywhere. You know, uh, car accidents, uh, gun ranges, uh, agricultural uh, accidents. So it, it's good information for everybody to know, um, no matter what you're doing. So the, uh, the idea is we taught everybody CPR and then put ADs everywhere. So the idea is to teach everybody how to control major bleeding and then put kits everywhere. So some, you go through some airports, you'll see uh, Stop the Bleeding Kits located with the ADs, uh, some convention centers. Um, the Chicago Cubs recently put uh, kits in there uh, in the Wrigley Field. Awesome. So, um, you know, so, and then if you want to go get trained, if you go to stopthebleed.org, you can look at, uh, you can look up your zip code or city, and there's a lot of, in the month of May, since it is National Stop the Bleed Month, there'll be a lot of free classes that are available during that month. Uh, by different people. It's all, all the instructors are volunteers. Um, there's certain professions that are able to teach it. Once you take the class and you can become an instructor, um, we have taught, uh, you know, nurses and then they uh, become uh, instructors in their area and then they go out and teach as well. So it's a, it's a pretty big program. Uh, I believe it's, I believe we're up to 2.6 million people have been taught uh, the program so far. Um, so the, again, the idea is to teach everyone how to do it. And if you go to stopthebleed.org, you can find, uh, you can maybe be able to find a class near you by uh, searching your city or your zip code. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so I mean, if you're carrying a first aid kit, which you, you should be, especially in the uh, 
the, the industry and, and sport that we're in here, the, the shooting industry in general, uh, you should definitely have a kit and you should definitely know how to use it. So stopthebleed.org, uh, find a class and get some knowledge on your kits. Excellent. Right. Yes. Yeah. Chris, thanks for coming out. Uh, we're not going to stop here. We have some more videos coming as well. So stay tuned. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Okay.